Hello, this is History Shorts with the Artifactual Scholar. Today, I'll be talking about the extraordinary life of Eugene Bullard. Bullard was the first African-American combat pilot flying for France during World War I. Though he was celebrated in France, he was ignored in the United States, and after the war, his story was largely forgotten. Bullard was born in rural Georgia in 1895, the son of a former slave. Bullard's youth was tumultuous, and at the age of 11, he left home and wandered throughout the South. As he traveled, he was confronted with the brutality of the Jim Crow South. In 1912, resolved to escape racial prejudice in the United States, he stowed away on a German steamship, and, after making his way across Scotland, wound up in London. There, Bullard performed slapstick in a traveling troupe and embarked on a career in boxing. In 1913, he went to Paris to box, and like many others before him, fell in love with France and decided to stay. Bullard was in France in 1914 when World War I began. He volunteered to fight for his adopted country, joining the French Foreign Legion. He was wounded at the Battle of Verdun in 1916 and awarded the Croix de Guerre for his bravery. While recovering from his wounds, he decided to join the French Air Corps and in May 1917 earned his pilot wings. Bullard was soon assigned to fly French Spad fighter planes. His plane was emblazoned with an insignia that portrayed a dagger pierced heart and the slogan, All Blood Runs Red. Bullard reportedly flew missions with his pet rhesus monkey, Jimmy, and in November 1917 he claimed two aerial victories, though neither was confirmed. He also gained the nickname Black Swallow of Death and became somewhat of a legend in the French press. After the U.S. entered the war and began forming its own Air Corps, Bullard applied to fly for his native country. Yet, despite his experience and reputation, Bullard's application was rejected because of his race. So he continued to fly for France until a confrontation with a superior officer led to his reassignment to the infantry, where he remained until his discharge in 1919. After the war, Bullard stayed in France, at first working in a Paris cabaret, then owning and operating his own nightclub, Le Grand Duc. Bullard's establishment was one of the popular centers of Parisian Jazz Age culture, and luminaries such as Ernest Hemingway, Langston Hughes, and Josephine Baker befriended the former aviator. As tensions with Germany began to increase in the 1930s, Bullard again volunteered to serve France by conducting espionage on Nazi sympathizers in Paris. When World War II began in 1939, he enlisted in the infantry. After being wounded by an artillery shell during the German advance through France in 1940, Bullard fled to Spain, Portugal, and eventually the U.S., where he settled in New York City. There he worked various jobs and became involved in the burgeoning civil rights movement. In 1949, he was attacked by police in a racist mob in Peekskill, New York, while attending a Paul Robeson concert. In 1954, French President Charles de Gaulle invited Bullard to France to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the start of World War I. Bullard was given the honor of relighting the eternal flame at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier in Paris. Five years later, he was awarded the Légion d'honneur, France's highest military decoration. Despite the honors in France, Bullard remained unknown at home. He spent his final years working as an elevator operator at Rockefeller Center in New York City. In 1959, Bullard did receive a small bit of recognition when he was interviewed on NBC's Today Show. Bullard died in October 1961. 33 years later, in 1994, Bullard was posthumously granted the rank of second lieutenant by the U.S. Air Force. Eugene Bullard's story is one of adventure, perseverance, glory, and tragedy. His legacy as an aviation pioneer and French military hero is but one part of his remarkable life. This has been History Shorts. Thanks for watching.